The Sony A7C is my dream camera of 2018 when I was a child, a hopeless child boy. But boy have times. Check. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So I figure we talk about the Sony A7C today. Is it worth? Does it look on paper according to Sony Alpha rumor? Rumors. And we do know that he does get his source by digging up jellyfish. And then the sting he gets, the shape of it. Oh, 7C. Oh, it's 30p. Oh, it hurts 30 times as much as it did last time. 30p. 4K, 30p. That's how he does it, and he's never wrong. He also could be a woman, I don't know. Women can write, so. So before we get started, we're on the Canon R5 in 1080p loser mode on the 15 to 35. I have a bunch more videos coming. We got a bunch of lenses. Somebody that lives in the area lent me a couple, so we got a bunch of fun times ahead, but how's that 1080 life? So the Sony a7C is what the a7 III should have been. If they would have released that, I would have bought it. And I probably might have not even started this channel. I started this because the a7 III didn't have a flippy screen. It was the perfect camera. I was like, why did, oh, why? So I made that rant in my living room in Thailand to let Sony in the universe know I have enough, enough of this shit. I was getting more and more into cameras at that point. I was like, I want to start a channel. I've been watching reviews for a long time. And it's like, I have stuff to say. I should start it. So I started my other channel, Vegetable Conspiracies, back in 2013. And then I just became more increasingly aware that cameras sucked and I needed one better than my last. So I'm sitting there in my sweltering hot living room in Thailand making videos on the Panasonic G85 and a manual focus lens with 50 millimeters. That's 35. We're not even there yet. Trying to manual focus. Oh yeah, that, I could be. I was never in focus. Oh, hey cinema. It's been a while. It's a nice movie we're watching right now. Is Tom Hanks coming? I hope not. He's the world's leading supplier of adrenochrome. He's a demon. He's been executed. Oh my God, I've said too much. So in 2018, when I started this channel, the Sony a7 III was my dream camera. It was just lacking the flippy screen. So I was like, I can't really, ah. but that was it. And now we have it. The Sony a7 III with a flippy screen. And that's all, and it's smaller. And it's got a stupid lens that we'll get to. But this is it, but times have changed. We didn't, I need 10 bit. I need 240 frames per second. That's one of the downsides of these stupid cameras. 120p on the R6. We're so used to that now. We need more. Like they just caught up to it. That grip though, I tell you. Even walking with that 15 to 35, just hanging down by the side, no problem. This grip is fantastic. It might be my favorite grip of all times battling with the olympus that's different it's skinnier and weird but it's better in some way but just looking at it i kind of dig the look of it with that silver that's a little interesting i didn't like the fuji xt4 in silver it didn't look right with the dials if the dials were black maybe you need accents that ain't right although they didn't do it the viewfinder they should have torn that thing off. Why is it even on there sticking out? How are you gonna put that in the pocket? You lumpy ass. But here we have a tiny looking camera, full frame. They say it weighs 507 grams, although I think that's without the battery and SD card, because that's what Sony did to me in the press release of the A7S III. They're like, oh, it's only 604 grams or something. I was like, wow, look at that. Even lighter than the A7 III? And then it's like 699, oh, sorry. You need a battery? No. Oh. That's your fault. But if that's with a battery, that's G85 level. That's light. That is light. And that stupid ass lens that we'll get to, that looks light too. On paper, this has it all, but that's the problem with specs. You read a spec sheet and it's like, oh, okay, that has everything I'd ever need. Just like the Canon R5, it's like, oh, full frame, Canon autofocus, but it struggles in low light, not here. People keep telling me, oh, it's your problem. Every other camera I compared it to, same lighting, because they don't have the same problems. The Fuji doesn't struggle. The G9 beat this. Let that sink in. Sink it hard. But on paper, dual pixel Mark II. And it's losing me. 
constantly outside is just hunting. It's weird, it's weird stuff. So a spec sheet doesn't really matter. How's this gonna perform in the real world? I think it'll be pretty good. I am gonna trash it a little bit because it's kind of, it sounds outdated. A7 III is not gonna cut it. If it's 4K 30 with 8-bit, I just, I can't see it. Although to be fair, one of my favorite images of any camera I've ever used is that Olympus. And it's 8-bit, it's terrible 8-bit, but it looks good. So for my needs, honestly, I don't need 10-bit, but I want it for some reason. I don't know why, to make LUTs. These LUTs are important to the world. They need to have them. I might make a stupid, like a parody LUT pack. You can download it for free. Donate if you please. <laughs> but it'll be available because it'll be that dumb like this. Honestly though, it does look very intriguing for a vlogger slash YouTube hobo. It's got everything you need. What more could you possibly want? Full frame, amazing autofocus. If they have that activated IBIS where it's a little crop and it's actually usable, why not? What? And you need to update your color science to Canon or Olympus level. That is the only thing holding me back from jumping into the Sony universe. I've been playing videos side by side filmed with this outside versus the A7S III. I just, I prefer the Canon image. Uh, you'll always have that and I'll be looking to use that color transform space thing in DaVinci to make the Sony into a Canon, but it'll never be the same. It'll never work. Things that people will bitch about like a single SD card slot. Thank you. Like this has a single slot to me. One of them is CF Express. That thing's useless. They can't even record to two separate videos anyway. Two separate cards for video. I would never use it. I never have. I've had cameras with two slots. It's like that. Nah. Wasted space. You could have put a better mic jack in there. What I don't get is why the price is so high. Why is it more than a A7 III, like three years later, not improving much specs? You just give us the flippy screen. I'd much rather have it than an A7 III, but is it enough in today's world? Vloggers are scrubs. We're not professional and we bring zero valued information to the world. But some of us like shiny things, and this isn't very shiny, except that silver one. It's pretty shiny. But like this versus the Panasonic S5, 100% you go with this. Zero, even though they got 10-bit glory in there, 4K 60p. Come on now. You're never in focus. What good is 10-bit blurred? Sony has caught up in IBIS. They have the best IBIS now. They really do, because it doesn't warp with the wide-angle lenses. Like, I don't know how they did it. IBIS always warps except in Sony somehow. It's now the best IBIS of all systems and that was their only weakness. Just bow down to our reptilian overlords. Would you like crackers? Uh, take them right now. It's okay. Eat the hand. Now what I don't understand. This kit lens. And you're gonna market it towards vloggers with a 28 millimeter plus the digital crop of your stabe, 30 mil, if it's not 31, to vloggers, just nostril vlogs. In my testing, the Sony kit lens, the previous one, the 28 to 70, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. The dual stabe is not dual. They argue while you're filming, and you can hear it. You can hear the arguments. I've heard it. Oh, hey, Ibis. New kid on the block. You're weak. I got this. I got this video. You back off. Bro, you suck. There's a reason Sony only put you in a couple lenses. I got this. I can stabilize any lens. I'm the future. You're a bitch. I look more natural. I don't know what you do, but like the wavy corners? Is that your thing? Who are you waving to? Who are you even talking to right now? Sony fixed me. They added a digital crop. Now I move freely without waving to anybody. I mind my own business. What do you mind? Just back off for this video. I got this. All right, I'm gonna stabilize today. You just stop. No, I'm gonna do it. Let me do it. Look at this. Look at these movements. Can you do this? That's not even stable, it's this. So this kit lens, 28 to 60, 
28 is nowhere near wide enough and they're gonna market this towards vloggers again. It's the Sony ZV-1 all over again. I don't understand it. I would say, just by releasing this lens, I would say Sony doesn't listen to the public because we've been saying 16 to 35, there's your zone. That's what the ZV-2 better be. And this is what we want for vlogging, it's not wide enough. Every single review on the ZV-1 said it. It's like, oh, it's amazing features, it's just a little tight, a little tight here. But you see the Sony a7S III, they corrected every problem. They listened to the customers. I don't get the two sides, like they definitely listened. They fixed every single thing, flippy screen out there, IBIS fixed, autofocus improved, how? Everything. But now this kit lens, a Tony 4, just because it's tiny, they wanted to focus on the size, they couldn't go wide, oh, that'll make it two grams more. Definitely not. I love that Panasonic did the 20 to 60. That's the direction you need to go, and 3.5. Still a scrub lens and you won't be in focus. Panasonic colors are bullshit. I swear to God, if I see a promotional marketing with a vlogger, just all happy with that lens, I'm gonna smack that kid. It's got a 40.5 size filter size. What the hell is that? Who even makes those? Freaking Kodak. One thing I will say, I'm not seeing a lot of function buttons. Apparently YouTubers don't need to change settings. Where's that front dial that's gone? But honestly, I'll be in aperture priority mode and I won't really need it. So I'm okay with it, but some function buttons. There's one, it's funny, they're making a full frame camera in an APS-C body. And I think what I would have preferred is the APS-C camera in a full frame body. And then you get more features, but still full frame. Still, oh God, oh, I had one chance at that. Honestly, I would love an A6700 in an APS-C body, same body, but give us that digital crop. And then the 10 to 18 lens, I'm going, I'll go. So we'll have to wait to see the full specs, but it seems pricey for what it is. And not a lot of video improvement spec wise that we know of, but still it's intriguing. I just, if it doesn't have 240 frames per second in the dynamic range of an A7S III, what's the point? I thought this was gonna be like a Canon RP competitor and so be super cheap. You do realize that the Canon RP is like less than a thousand dollars and tiny, still lighter than this. Sony couldn't do it. Oh, they're so angry. <laughs> the reptilians are just scratching each other. They wanted the smallest camera and they couldn't do it. They couldn't beat the RP because RP crippled it so hard they could only do line skip 1080p. There's no components in there. There's no parts. It's just like a light bright backing. There's nothing in there. That's why it's so light. So I think we're done here. It's a nice job. It's a nice Where are we? The Samsung NX1. How could you? Oh, you're in there. Get out of here, Canon. Oh, you're in the shot. You're too big. Oh, you're fat. Oh, go. My God. My God. <laughs> so it looks like a decent camera. Uh, it's on my radar. I'm curious. Wow. Let me know your thoughts down below. Is it too basic with the 8-bit video? I don't think it'll have 10-bit. I don't see how it could in that tiny body. Will it overheat? It might. That tiny thing. So we'll see. Let me know down below. And thank you for buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. For the LUT pack. It's not available yet. Soon. Maybe. No. Subscribe from over there. Say hi.